Welcome to our special coverage of the North Salmon trial. I'm News 6 morning anchor Kirsten O'Connor alongside our News 6 legal analyst Rick Jancha, longtime attorney here in Orlando. Thank you for joining us again. You're welcome. Thank you. So we are finishing out the week here. Uh, one of the main points that we got yesterday was that the government may rest its case this week. Yes, that was quite, kind of surprising to me is that it seems to be going much quicker than everybody anticipated. Um, sometimes simple is better. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you can overload a jury with too much information and make it too complicated. Looks like the government is just streamlining their case and putting on what they believe is just absolutely essential. And yesterday when we talked across. about it, you were saying that some of the concerns you had were that they didn't go into that evidence, the forensic evidence. Yes. They went into some of it yesterday, but there's also a lot of negative evidence or evidence that's contrary to the government's theory of the case. I still believe that they should delve into that because if they don't, they leave a big opening for the defense to say, look what the government was hiding. Look what the government didn't want you to hear, which would play right into their defense argument that uh, you know the government had led Ms. Salman on to make a statement uh, that it was coerced, that type of thing. So it's never good if the government gives the defense an opportunity to make an argument that they were trying to hide something during their case in chief. Right. So that's some of the things we could be hearing in court today. Absolutely. Ho hopefully the government, from their standpoint, will present some of these things, such as the fact that uh, Mr. Mateen first went to Disney Springs, spent two and a half hours at Disney, then Googled uh, Orlando nightclubs and then went it came up Eve and Pulse and he first went to the Eve nightclub before he went to Pulse. I mean if I was the government I would bring that up just to show we are being fair we are presenting all the evidence for you to consider. Right and that's some of the evidence that we got right at the beginning of this during jury yes. selection. Correct. We found that information out so uh, it was a big surprise to start off the trial and we still we haven't heard about it since. No. Uh, if the government doesn't present it, I'm sure the defense is going to present it. Now, the, as the trial schedule is now, the government's anticipating concluding on Thursday. Friday, they will do the final jury instructions for when the case is completely over. And they waive Ms. Salman's presence at that. A uh, defendant has the right to be there, but they indicated that they wanted her to rest up, if you will. And then Monday, the defense indicated they have eight to ten witnesses they would call. So possibly it could wrap up next week. And what is during Friday when the jury is being given those instructions, what does that entail? Well, the jury's not given the instructions. What this, the jury will be off. It'll be the attorneys meeting with the judge in the courtroom with a court reporter going over in, jury instructions submitted by the government, jury instructions submitted by the defense. And that's when the court decides which instructions to give and which ones not to give. Okay, so those will be talked about and then they'll be given to and the And that's jurors. going to be a very, very important part of this case because the jury has to make the decision based on those written instructions. The judge will read the instructions at the conclusion of the case and they'll also be given a copy of them. So one word or two words in a jury instruction can be the difference between a guilty verdict and an acquittal. Okay, so you think that that will only last one day? I think just for the purpose of doing the jury instructions, because they've already submitted them. And each side has had their opportunity to make the objection. So now it will just be going and meeting with the judge and let the judge decide which ones he's going to give and not give. Monday sounds like a very busy day uh, in the federal courthouse. Monday should be the most surprising day, I think, so far of the whole trial, is when we hear what Noor Salman's defense is, what they intend to prove. And the thing is, she doesn't have to put any evidence on I mean, she could just at, at the end of tomorrow's testimony say, we rest, we, the case is over, we let the jury decide. But they've indicated they're going to call witnesses, so I'm sure they're going to be calling the witnesses concerning her psychological state, spousal abuse, that type of thing, and that she was more successful susceptible to giving a false confession. One of the questions a lot of people have asked during this trial is, will Noor Salman take the stand? We may find that out next week. Yes. Uh, usually you try not to put your client on the stand because they are under so much stress as it is, and you don't want to give the other side the opportunity to delve into any type of weaknesses that they have. But 
in a case like this, when you're facing life imprisonment, she just may very well take the stand and explain, or try to explain some of the things that were going through her mind and why she acted the way she did. So it should be very interesting as whether or not they do or do not call her. But she's absolutely got a right not to testify. And one of the things the government uh, is doing as they're wrapping up their case here is painting a new picture of her. We talked about this a little bit earlier, yes. about the money involved right after the Pulse nightclub yes, shooting. They, they called witnesses about them going to a jewelry store in South Florida and buying a $7,000 wedding game or engagement ring, uh, her purchasing half carat earrings at another store, and her going to PNC Bank with Omar Mateen to get access to his bank account upon his death. And uh, what was interesting is the government's trying to paint her as greedy, that uh, she was not concerned as much about her husband as she was about what would happen to her financially at the conclusion. So they're trying to paint a totally different picture than what the defense is going to be trying to paint. Yeah, and I'm sure the defense will have a whole uh, list of things that they're trying to make sure they get to for yeah. the jurors before the end of the trial. Absolutely. Yeah, and make sure uh, they have. It's a chess match. It is. And. Uh, we're going to see how it plays out. We will. All right, Rick Jancha, our legal analyst here at News 6 with me for this early edition of our ClickOrlando.com discussion of the North Salmon trial. We will have another one starting at 1230 right here on ClickOrlando.com. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kirsten O'Connor.